We got a pretty wild to-do list today. That's <laughs> pretty random. So this morning I'm going to make some ice cream because we have a gallon of raw milk that we need to use up. Um, I'm actually a little leery of using it because we might run out before we get more milk on Monday for coffee and that would be an emergency. Um, also, last night I got the oil changed in the Honda and for now, even though we have the new 10,000 watt, it's actually 9,000 watt uh, generator, we're gonna continue to use the Honda because of its quietness and fuel efficiency. One thing I've always wished I had on this generator was an hour meter and I bought a couple of them off of Amazon. So I'm gonna try and install one today and then I also wanna add one to the sawmill. Looks like it rained a bunch and then snowed a little last night. Wow, look at that puddle of water. There's some rain. What do you wanna bet the garage is swimming in water right now? Oh, fun. Nice slushy, must be fall. Look at all that fat, can you see that? Probably a third fat. <laughs> Yummy. This milk comes from a Jersey cow down the road. I think that's snow, but it's probably more like hail. Uh, melt that sugar in the milk really quick. Can you put some heat on this for me? Yep. Thanks. Oh, there's the ice cream maker. Let's look into this <clears throat> hour meter business. So I've always felt like anything that requires maintenance periodically, some way of keeping track of that maintenance is good. And I guess on cars we use mileage, but on equipment you can probably use like the date, like once a year. But with our generator, man, the usage could be nothing, you know, for a week or two, and then it could be every day for a month. So. An hour meter, I guess, for something so expensive. In fact, I've seen this feature on generators a third this price, so I guess that's a hint to Honda that you might want to do this. The idea with this one, I saw some hour meters that used like kinetic energy or whatever. I don't know what the word is, but they had some sort of sensor in them for oscillation. So whenever it starts vibrating, the hour meter starts working. The bad news is, I've seen uh, complaints that those, when you put them like in the back of a truck or you know, you're know you transporting them, that same vibration will make the hour meter count. So I went with one that uses, I think, induction. I think that's the term for the way this works. So this hour meter came with a watch battery. I bought two of them, so let's look at this one. So it came with a watch battery and everything in one simple package. I'm pretty sure I overpaid for this by triple because I think I paid about 20 bucks each and I'm pretty sure whoever I bought them from on Amazon paid a dollar each. Anyway, <laughs> why I wanted this meter is it actually has several different functions. It's not just an hour meter. So it has the total hours on it, which of course for our generator is going to be way wrong, but it'll give me 
some baseline, right? It has a job function, which I think would be really helpful for like the sawmill. So if you were charging people by the hour, then you could use the job function. And then it also has a service function and this meter goes from zero to 200 hours and it's actually a countdown timer. Uh, apparently when your countdown timer gets to zero, the screen blinks to let you know that you have some service that's due. Um, it's also a tachometer. I can't remember, I haven't studied how to do the tachometer function yet. I don't really care, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Maybe, like I see a lot of people putting these things on like a dirt bike. Um, that you might care what your tachometer is. I don't know. So it's an induction style. So we've got to wrap this wire around the spark plug wire and then find a way to mount this, you know, where it can be easily read. I really don't want to take this generator apart, especially getting to the internal components, mostly because we still have a warranty and doing that would void our warranty. Even though Honda has proven to us that their warranty is maybe not as good as you want to believe. I don't know how I get myself into these situations. And when I saw the instructions that you're supposed to zip tie this on, I thought, right, totally makes sense. I think I'm gonna, I don't know, seems like a joke. Zip tying to a combustion engine that vibrates seems like a really stupid design. So it's time to go back to the drawing board and find a better way to hold this wire in place. And of course, in this situation, the access to this wire is ridiculously cramped. So time to do some thinking. Well, I used one of the zip ties and just zip tied the end of the, the coil to the next strand, kind of to lock it onto the wire. And then I, I bought some of these kind of Velcro straps for organizing cables and things. <clears throat> and I used one to just kind of wrap around that. I don't know. Sure seems like it's going to just melt, but I guess we'll figure that out. All right, so that's back on there. It does look like there's a little bit of stress fracturing on the, the boot for that spark plug cable, though. Just from heat, probably. Um, let's see. So routing this cable. I'm sure with Honda that's going to be a really tight fit. I guess a part of me thinks I probably should have routed it through one of those vents, but I'm pretty sure it gets pretty toasty in there. Hmm. That's looking really good. And then I'm going to find a place so this handle flips up, so it needs to stay out of the way of that handle. See, and even this is a handle. So you really don't want it there. And I think the generator cord plugs in here. So I'm almost wondering if like on the side might actually be a better place for it. I love tinkering with stuff like this, but the thought of tearing this whole generator apart. <clears throat> actually, let me back up. There's an entire industry of people who love hiding cables. And uh, I think it's really fun, but it's not what I wanted to spend my day doing today. So. Um, we'll have to find just kind of a short-term solution, and then we'll, you know, see you don't want it over here by the pull cord, so that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, probably don't want it crossing the exhaust, so maybe something like that could work. Then it's not really in the way of anything, and I don't know what I could use to hold all this stuff down. I was thinking like even just like clear silicone in this area just to hold the wire there, but I guess we should make sure it's going to work first. So let's start the generator. Looks like it defaults to the RPM setting. And there's your job function, service function, has a max RPM. Um, these are some of the internal settings. And you can adjust the number of sparks, the number of times of revolution, etc. Looks like you cannot get to the total time while it's running. So that must refresh here. Well, oh, I think that's a setting. Yeah, so that's actual RPM. This is job, service, Maximum RPM warning is 8,500, which is ridiculous. I don't really care about that. This is a log of the maximum RPM on something. You can reset that, or maybe it resets every time you turn the thing off, I don't know. This is one spark per revolution, and that was the refresh rate. So right now it's refreshing 
every half a second. I guess I don't really have a genius idea. This could probably run somewhat neatly right up through there. I guess I'll work on that and you may never find out what I did. <laughs> but then we need a place to put this. This doesn't seem like it would be in the way. I'm worried if it goes on the side and it sticks out, it might get bashed. So I guess I need to work on that. But I guess the good news on the generator specifically, we now have an hour meter. Let's see if when we turn the generator off, we get like a total hours. So I don't think we even ran it for three minutes. So we haven't even accumulated any total time yet or job time or service time. So I guess we'll update in a future video, or maybe later in this video. I think we should probably run the generator. Aly Alyssa's working on the computer and doing some stuff. So I guess we'll fire this up, let it run, and then we'll see how the hour meter works. I think I forgot to mention, they include this uh, Velcro backing and gives you access to the battery. So I think I'm gonna make an arbitrary decision to mount this right here. So what makes the sawmill difficult is that the engine is stationary? Stationary, no, the engine is not stationary to this upper rack. So mounting this has to pretty much stay on the engine itself, you know, somewhere maybe in this area. Um, I wanna keep it out of the way of all the service components like the, the uh, air cleaner, etc. Let's see. Somewhere in there would seem like a pretty good spot. Then maybe I can tie this back to that cable. Then again, not going across all that seems like a great idea. I see a pattern here. I'm not a fan of afterthought design. It really irritates me when I have to like run hodgepodge cables all over something. I suppose that's probably why I don't ever do this stuff. I think that'll be okay. It's not in the way of your hand. This cover probably rarely needs to come off. That'll work pretty good. All right, let's fire up the sawmill and see if it works. So I'm thinking that this is probably, since it's a four stroke engine, two cylinders, it probably sparks. I have no idea. Sparks per revolution would be what? Uh, you'd think it would spark every other. So one spark every other revolution? I uh, guess I should have checked this meter before I even, oh, there we go. So two sparks per revolution, one spark per every other revolution. Hmm, let's try that. <laughs> Probably ought to up my engine knowledge. idles at 2400 RPM. So let's go fix this. Guess I'll leave that running and we'll come back and just double check that our hour meter is working. So the job meter hasn't shown any uh, increase yet so we'll leave that idling here for a few minutes. I wonder if this one's working. Definitely getting vibrated good. All right so it's showing seven tenths of an hour on the job meter and our service meter has dropped by seven tenths of an hour. So that's perfect. This was when our next oil change should be due. And I don't know why the tachometer is useful, but sweet. Yep, looks like the garage is soaked. So we installed floor drains, right? But we covered them up during rough construction. One, so they don't get plugged with junk and sawdust. And two, our septic's not connected to anything right now. So I guess at best they would daylight out to the footing drains. So for the time being, every time we, it rains, until we get the roof on this thing, we end up with a swamp for a garage.
45. We got 55 degrees to go. Nice, our meter is working. Um, the thing I did forget to mention is that this meter featured a backlit display. Honestly, probably not gonna be sawmilling after dark, but I thought it was just a nice feature. That way if it's you know hard to see, you can see. I think I've mentioned it already, but one of our more urgent projects is connecting the septic. And so with the snow gone, we actually had like an inch overnight, but it's already melted. I'm slowly working through kind of just the cleanup of the workshop. <laughs> the best analogy I have, it feels like we had 50, we had a big party with like 50 people and I had to pick up all the Dixie cups. But metaphorically, that doesn't work because these weren't drunk partiers, these were hard workers. So we've got a ton of kind of wood waste. Yesterday I worked really hard on getting a lot of these wood scraps moved out to the wood pile. I need to do more of that today. As you can see, this wheelbarrow is completely full of water from rain and snow. Uh, what I'm trying to get to is these beams so that I can move them and uh, get to this lumber so we can get that taken apart. I'm trying to get this path through to the septic area cleared out at a project turns out can't do that because of this yada yada Scarf family is getting to be pretty big. I think I can speak fairly for Alyssa and I and say that the workshop was basically a whirlwind. And we try to keep what is perceptibly a pigsty semi-neat and organized. So we have our plumbing here, reclaim stuff there, slabs here, and it's hard because with the whirlwind, we have so many helpers and so much is happening so fast and it has to happen fast that we feel like things turn into kind of chaos again. So it's a lot of just kind of putting things back together like I didn't even realize all those tarps were over there. So I feel like we're kind of sort of even 10 days later still finding our way through things and still doing property cleanup. We're still getting rid of things that we'll never use. We've, we've worked really hard on this pile of reclaimed materials. There's still some good stuff in there, but there's a lot of stuff that just needs to be burned for firewood. Bugaboo likes it. Um, so it's challenging. We feel like a property under development takes a lot of, a lot of effort to keep it somewhat organized and keep, you know, things from really getting out of hand. So this pipe was reclaimed. We got it from a gentleman with a bunch of lumber and stuff. I think he even had the door for our cabin. Anyway, we have tried really, really hard to the point where we've wasted time and money trying to use this pipe. And it turns out it's some sort of special ABS or something, maybe like mobile home pipe or something, some ridiculous dimension that nobody seems to have fittings for. So today I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the recycle because I feel like we've tried hard to use it and it's end up becoming uh, a thorn. The other thing that's super frustrating, we had all of our slabs, these are pine slabs that we had made with our chainsaw mill. All of this stuff was tarp, and in the chaos of the workshop and everything, some tarps got moved, some stuff got used, and so all of our slabs were left untarped. 
and then it snowed inches a foot plus and everything now is completely wet which isn't a tragedy it's just there's a lot of kind of back-end work that needs to be done to get the property back in shape Our meter's working. down really fast. Uh, let's see if any of this wet wood will burn. I doubt it. Well, let's see what happens. That's why we built this thing. Waste wood incinerator. Toasty on the surface, turtle says a hundred. Back in there, Mr. Turtle. Get back in there. little more time check on it when I get back from town see how the ice cream is doing that's feeling better oh yeah that's looking good oh yeah oh boy is it ready I was about to cheat on that ice cream with the store bought. You're gonna wanna see this. Ooh, do you wanna lick that? Ah! Look how frozen this is. Did the salt help? Oh yeah. Really? 
That's what was missing. I hadn't, didn't have enough salt. <laughs> we have a problem. I only have nine pints cleaned. Okay. And there's still at least a pint. You can fit a pint in my belly. Oh. No problem. There we go. Okay. Problem solved. I hope you feel better. Mm, I am feeling better. Good. Chicken noodle soup and homemade ice cream. That'll do it.